All right now, for all you boppers out there in the big city, all you mini painters with an eye for the action, I set out to paint some minis of an old favorite, a special flick called The Warriors. And I do mean The Warriors. Here's a video with them in mind. Hey there, welcome to The Cozy Painter. My name is Sky, and today I'm painting all of the miniatures that are included in the board game The Warriors Come Out to Play. The board game is based on the 1979 cult classic film The Warriors, where a street gang known as The Warriors has to fight their way from the Bronx to their home turf on Coney Island after being wrongfully accused of assassinating a respected gang leader. The board game is a collaboration between Funko Games and Prospero Hill. Included in the box is the game mat, instructions, tokens of most of the warriors so you can pick your favorite or second favorite to play as. There's also illustrated cardstock decks that relate to the gameplay in some way. I actually have no intention of actually playing this game. I don't really like board games at all. I bought this exclusively for the miniatures, so let's check them out. There are seven miniatures of different gangs from the movie. One based on Swan, the leader of the Warriors, as well as the gangs the Warriors fight against. The Punks, the Lizzies, the Turnbull ACs, the Rogues, the Baseball Furies, and the Hi-Hats for some reason? These guys have about 10 seconds of screen time in the intro to the movie. The Warriors never even talked to them. I'm not exactly sure how they weaseled their way into the game over the orphans. These are pretty simple sculpts in regards to detail. I'm going to try and compensate for that simplicity by imbuing a sense of texture in their costumes. I made another video about cloth texturing when I painted a Porco Rosso miniature, which you can check out in the description below. Now these characters are all wearing rough cloth like denim, so let's start there. I'm worried that these soft plastic minis aren't going to hold paint very well. It tends to flake off of these kinds of minis. So I'm going to try and put down four layers of matte varnish and Sinyl Res black primer back to back to hopefully set up a good base to work on. After the black primer, I hit it from above with the white ink for a zenithal highlight. I start by picking out a couple shades of dark blue and base coating all of the blue denim. I then add some light gray mixed with light peach and pick out all of the sculpted details. Next, I freehand vertical and horizontal scratches over areas that would be highlighted but don't have much detail sculpted in. This is going to simulate the denim texture and add some interest. After the highlights, I darken the recesses with our original dark blue mixed with a little black. Finally, I glaze the original dark blue all over to blend the colors together. I repeated this process a couple times with varying intensity to try and get some different results. The black pants follow the same technique as the blue, but with a couple small tweaks. When you're painting black, the majority of the surface needs to remain black in order to read as black instead of gray. I only remembered this after struggling with the rogue miniature for a few days. I base coat black, pick out the highlights, and add in that scratchy texture. You don't want to highlight as brightly as we did with the blue or else it will stop reading as black. It takes a little bit more self-control. After the texturing, I glaze black all over the pants and repeat the process until I'm happy with the results. I took a different approach to the Baseball Fury. By this point, I was pretty sick of texturing denim. So instead, I leaned into the zenithal base coat that was already applied and just shifted the shadow color into more of a dark blue. Finally, the pants are done, and now we have an opportunity to add some variety in the shirts. My goal was to render different materials to differentiate the characters. The Lizzie's are a gang of sirens. I wanted her clothes to appear softer and more inviting than the others. I stippled highlights with a glaze consistency to imply a softer fabric. For the hi-hat, I focused on highlighting based on the volumes of his muscles to show that his shirt was maybe thinner and tighter fitting, almost like a sheer top. For the punk, I used more muted highlights and added the same kind of visible, scratchy thread that we did on his overalls. 
The fight scene with the punks is one of the more brutal scraps in the movie. I wanted to show that he's a seasoned fighter with well-worn clothes. The rogues and the warriors both wear leather vests. The leather would be more reflective than cloth, so I use longer, more intense highlights. The rogue's vest leans more blue than the black gray of his pants to differentiate the materials more. When you're painting a mini who's wearing all one color, texture and subtle glazing can do a lot to break up the monotone palette. The warrior's vest was so devoid of detail that I really struggled with it. I ended up having to freehand in the details myself. The Baseball Fury gets some nifty pinstriping top to bottom. I don't do much texture work because the zenithal highlight already left some speckly texture. That should be enough. I don't want to overwhelm the viewer with too much information in his clothes. In the Warriors movie, New York City is filled with costume street gangs all fighting for their piece of an ill-gotten pie. And what gang of hooligans would be complete without a cool logo for their costume? Unfortunately, these miniatures don't have that detail sculpted. That's something that we're going to have to freehand in. I talked about my approach to freehand in a video where I painted Elden Ring's General Radon, so if you'd like to see more of that, you should check it out in the description. I start by blocking in the basic shapes of the freehand. You can sketch in the basic shape in pencil if that helps, which I did on the Turnbull AC. Once I had the basic shapes in place, I started blocking in the colors. Try to be a bit neat, but you're probably not going to get it perfect in one try. Once the main colors were blocked in, I spent some time refining the shapes and just cleaning it up. Once I was happy with the design, I went in and highlighted the shapes. The last major step to do is the skin. I approached this by creating three different base colors to build up a variety of colors across the minis. I added purple and dark red to a pink, tan, and dark brown to create the base coats. For the Turnbull AC, I applied a dark brown base and followed up with pretty bright Caucasian highlight. I figured I could paint in more varieties in the paler tones and then glaze it all back down into a dark brown. I'm not sure if I'd do it this way again, but it was worth trying out. I added some red glaze all over to add warmth and added purple into the shadows to get some more definition in his muscles. I use a simpler approach for the lighter skin tones, simply mixing in a varying amount of peach to the two different base coats. The hi-hats and the baseball furies both have colorful face paint as part of their costume. I pulled out my trusty artist chalks and scraped away some fine powder to mix in with the paint. The white paint of the hi-hat was a little too thick with pigment and ended up looking like a textured shaving cream rather than war paint. I eased up a little on the pigments for the Baseball Fury's yellow and got a much more satisfying result. Most of the work on these models is done, all that's really left is the small details. This is where the overly simple sculpts and soft plastic really hurts the models. The hair on these minis is somehow both too simple and too complex. It's too complex to add any freehand reflections and hair strands, yet too simple to pick out edge highlights in volumetric lighting. Some of the models fare a little better than the others, but it was a struggle to work on some of these bits. Next, I did their weapons. The chains, knife, gun, and pipe. I hit with a nice silver. I did some freehand work on the baseball bat by stippling in striations in the wood grain. After picking out the last details, the only thing that's left is to paint the base rims black. And with that, the Warriors board game is done. This was an interesting project. I absolutely adore the movie the game is based on, but I got really burnt out on these figures about halfway through the process. The sculpts are so simple and lacking in detail that I needed to do a lot of freehand work to make them look good. That much freehand took its toll on me mentally, especially because my last project also had a large freehand portion. When painting minis, it's important to take a break from what techniques you're using a lot and try something different to avoid burnout. Beyond the miniatures, there's some very weird choices that Funko made with this board game. Perhaps most egregious is that the logo of the Warriors in all the art is just wrong. The Warriors clearly have a winged skull as their logo, 
whereas the game has a flaming snake. Some of the sculpts are clearly based on characters from the movie. The warrior is obviously Swan, the Lizzie is Star, and the punk is absolutely Vance. He's the only one in the gang shown to wear roller skates. What these characters have in common is that they're the leaders of their respective gangs. Compare those to the Turnbull AC, who doesn't appear to be Sid, and the Rogue is clearly the Lieutenant Cropsey. Which brings me to my next point. Arguably, the two most popular characters in the movie aren't in the game. Ajax, who was intentionally left out by Funko for being a violent criminal in the movie about violent criminals being violent criminals. And the other exclusion, which is inexcusable in my opinion, is the leader of the gang The Rogues, Luther. Luther is the main antagonist of the movie. David Patrick Kelly, who gives an absolutely captivating performance as Luther, just steals every scene that he's in. Even people who haven't seen the movie might be familiar with the iconic scene where Luther calls out the warriors for their final duel. David Kelly and James Ramar, who played Ajax, are arguably the most famous actors to come out of the Warriors. Perhaps there were licensing issues that prevented them from appearing in the game? But that theory doesn't really make sense. If we look at the instruction booklet included with the game, we see screenshots from the movie printed inside. The actors' likenesses are printed on the game pieces. So why aren't the two most famous characters included in the game in any way? Why did they change the Warriors logo when they have permission to use imagery from the movie? Why are some characters on the box directly taken from the movie and some don't even have the right costume on? I don't have any answers. I tried to reach out to the game designers Prospero Hill on Twitter, but I did not receive a response. The last issue I have with the game is the material that the miniatures are made out of. Even after four layers of varnish and primer and an additional layer of varnish on top, the paint still flakes off with the slightest abrasion. I'm actually afraid to handle these miniatures for fear of damaging the paint job that I work so hard on. If you're a game company and you're gonna go through the trouble of creating scale miniatures, I beg you, please use material that's gonna hold paint better. And on a less important note, I would love the option to just buy the miniatures in these board games. No offense to the hardworking folks at Prospero Hill, but I will never play this game. This is gonna sit on my shelf until the end of time gathering dust. I would spend so much more money on these company's products if they had an option to just buy the miniatures. It is solely my love for this movie that caused me to buy this game. It's my love for this movie that got me through the burnout of painting these miniatures. For me, The Warriors is a Linus blanket. It's a source of comfort, something that I can watch when I'm feeling down that'll lift me up. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it, as long as you don't mind depictions of violence in film. If you are going to watch it, try to find the theatrical version. Most streaming websites use the director's cut, which adds comic book transition panels between the scenes. Uh, it kind of ruins the feel of the movie. Most fans agree that the theatrical version is the way to go. I want to thank you for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've been Sky from The Cozy Painter, and until next time, stay cozy.